In the movie The Sound of Music, when Maria introduced the major scale to the Von Trapp children through the Rodgers and Hammerstein song Do Re Mi, did she know that this is the same scale pattern that you can use in playing rock, blues, metal, including Swedish death and progressive metal? Did the Von Trapp children become, in fact, metalheads from this one song? Well, I sure did. So how is it possible as we teach here to consistently study the major scale and the pattern of Do, Re, Mi, as I am playing here. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, so, La, Ti. And then use these same notes and the same intervals or distance between notes to play in metal, rock, blues, and for good old lead guitar jamming and improvisation. Well, allow me to introduce to you the wonderful world of the church modes and the modern modes of music. So first, let's go back a thousand years or so and look at why they are called the church or ecclesiastical modes. Ecclesiastical meaning of the church or of the clergy. Let's first start with chants. Chants were used in the Christian church were a means to present religious texts to the congregation and to God. There's an example of a chant. From about the time of Charlemagne, the year 742 to 814, chants began to be systematized according to current theories of music and structured to create order. In the 9th century, Pope Gregory I, patron saint of musicians, singers, students, and teachers, by the way, according to the Catholic Church, standardized Western plain chant into chants that can be used in special seasons or during church service. From the standardization and structure came naming. One would consider the chants from the letter of important pitches and then categorize them by their mode. Medieval music theorists use Greek names to identify these modes, many of which are in use today. Thus came the church modes. Think of it as the same exact scale and notes in that scale. However, any one of them could become the tonic or principal key, thus altering the scale's characteristics or feel. More on this later. It is important to note that chants, along with music theory, are not exclusive to one people, religion, or culture. Playing music and developing new theories of music encompasses the hearts and minds of many people in the world. China, Mesopotamia, India, Arabic nations, Greece and later in the modern era, Europe, Asia, and now contemporary theorists. As an example of a chant, coming from our wonderful modern and popular world, you can think of the vocals from the video game Halo as a current chant example. Ah, ah, ah. I played Halo quite a bit, so I know that song. Close enough. Now that we know a little more about where chants and where the modes came from, let's also look into what is referred to today as tonal music and why this is, this is important to the modes. Musical theorists in the Baroque period, the years 1580 to 1750, suggested new terminology for the final in a piece of music. As in the music of the day, there could be three or four finals in the vertical sound of the piece as the last chord played. Using C major as an example of a three or four note final as I'm playing here. Think of this four note chord stacked or vertical in notation. The concept of the final was replaced with tonic, which refers to the strongest note of the musical piece and often found in the lowest part of the chord. In this case, and as a result, unless it's inverted, it's C. You and I hear this form of music in almost every movie, TV series, and song we hear, and yes, even in Halo. It's essentially the construction of a song around a single prominent note, which all other notes become subordinate, eventually leading the musical piece back to the tonic. As music was further developed, the orientation around the tonic and a single pitch class, meaning all of the available notes of C, for example, found on the fretboard, that's a pitch class. Just as all of the notes of D found on the fretboard is a pitch class, and so on for every note. 
resulted in music considered or called tonal. So in our tonal music, if C is the tonic, then C is the key, and so on for any key of music. So you and I live in a tonal world, or some might refer to it as post-tonal. Tonal and the modes work perfectly together as each note of the major scale can be the tonic or key and its related named mode. Fun fact, sometimes finding the key of a song can be a little tough. Try reading the musical notation to determine the tonic or key of a song by simply reading the first chord or note played and comparing it to the last note or chord played of the song. If that doesn't work, look to the bass player and the notes they're playing, as they are often playing the lowest notes of the chord or the key of the song. To further understand church modes and the modern modes of music today, we need to look at scales. Central to the structure of our music today is the diatonic scale, a standard seven-tone scale using the seven natural notes by name and supporting either major or minor scale construction using the same exact pattern of whole steps and half steps or tones and semitones. Let me show you in the key of C major with the natural notes of C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and return to C. And back to C. The major scale encompassed the tonic, a whole step from the tonic to the second degree, a whole step from the second degree to the third, of a half step from the third to the fourth, a whole step from the fourth to the fifth, a whole step from the fifth to the sixth, a whole step from the sixth to the seventh, and a half step back to the tonic. Another fun fact, a scale degree is a reference to being numbered using Roman numerals and named related to the tonic. So then, first degree is Roman numeral one and name the tonic. Second degree, Roman numeral two, name the supertonic. Third degree is Roman numeral three and may name the mediant. Fourth degree, Roman numeral four, name the subdominant. Fifth degree, Roman numeral five and name the dominant. Sixth degree, Roman numeral six, name the submediant. And the seventh degree is Roman numeral seven and name the leading tone or subtonic. Now, wait a minute. How can the same structure or pattern be used for major and minor? This is a very important question and at the core of why I focus on the major scale and the modern modes as the primary method for study and useful in all styles of music today. A key to why is found in a quotation from one of my favorite books, the New Harvard Dictionary of Music, about the diatonic scale and its capability to accommodate major, minor, and all of the seven modes we teach here. It's actually my favorite quote and it states, in principle, any of the seven pitches of such a scale can be taken as the starting point, thus rearranging the order in which the tones and semitones occur. What that means is the pattern itself does not change, but the starting note or key or tonic can, thus changing the outcome of the, the song, its impact on the listener, and the musical piece in its entirety. The same pattern with different keys. I found that the discovery and the practice of the modern modes can be truly freeing and used to accommodate a variety of music and even possibly offer you more pay for play opportunities. It gives us the guitarist one course of fundamental study knowing the study can serve in almost any style of music. I'd like to go back to Halo. I want to sing that part again. Oh. The opening note of that is D, of the vocals. And let's see how, at the end of those vocals, how it returns back to D, the tonic. So Halo is, an, uh, is a perfect example of starting on a tonic, starting on a key, and returning to the key. I'd also like to demonstrate, in standard tuning, I'm gonna play using the G major scale and play in the key of G major. The notes of the G major scale are G, the tonic, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and back to G, the tonic. Shown here are notes by name with open strings across the entire fretboard. This simply means that I can play any one note, two note harmony, or three or more note chords using these highlighted notes and they will all be in the key of G major. 
And let me play G major just a little bit for you. So the notes I used were all in the G major scale. I didn't use any notes outside of G major scale. Now I mentioned my favorite quote, do you remember? Any of the seven pitches of such a scale can be taken as the starting point. So how does this quote apply to the modes and playing the guitar? Well, allow me to select the next degree or pitch in the scale, A, replacing G as the key or tonal center, and now we'll use A as its tonal center or key. What changed in the seven notes from the key of G major compared to A? Nothing. What changed in the patterns it's themselves? Nothing. So what changed? The key from which all other notes are subordinate, and therefore the distances between notes, thus establishing a method to play many genres through a single pattern. In modern modes, the value of this teaching is you can learn and study a singular scale pattern that covers the entire fretboard and accommodates primary chords. This is the major scale. Then we can use this knowledge and put to work this knowledge in your favorite style of music. Another example, I'll use the key of E major using the same pattern and notes of G major. So then using G major as the basis for naming the modern modes, using the Greek names from the past, they are by note or tonal center or key, mode name and characteristics, G major, mode name Ionian, and characteristics of a major scale. Next pitch up is A, mode name Dorian, with characteristics of a flatted third and a flatted seventh. Up a whole step is B, mode name for G in, with characteristics of a flatted second, flatted third, flatted sixth, and flatted seventh. Next is C, a mode named Lydian with characteristics of a raised fourth. Then D, mode named Mixolydian, with characteristics of a flatted seventh. Next up is E, also named the relative minor to G, mode named Aeolian and characteristics of a flatted third, flatted sixth, flatted seventh. Next is F, a mode named Locrian and characteristics of a flatted second, flatted third, flatted sixth, flatted seventh. Which I feel Locrian is an excellent mode for metal. With G major as the basis, all of the notes by name are the same. The starting note or tonic or key create unique characteristics found in the mode. This mapping and mode names can be completed for any key just by using the bass major scale. And you've heard these a bunch of times, you might not have recognized them. For example, the Dorian mode, which lowers the third and the seventh, is a pretty standard way to play rock and roll, blues, country, and encompasses the five-tone scale or pentatonic scale, also very popular. This would include a whole lot of songs from Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, among so, so many others, or the Mixolydian mode with its major third but flatted seventh. A perfect example of a song is Rush's Tom Sawyer during the rememberable lead guitar section. The point is that you can have a basis for study for use in personal practice, then move your study to pre-performance practice that we talk about, to work on modes with your favorite songs or with your songs that you create. So what do you do and where do you start? Get the seven patterns from Trouble Life. Memorize the seven patterns from any major scale, adding this study to personal practice times. Connect all of the patterns, playing them in various locations and starting notes in their major scale, key, or tonic, and see how they overlap. See the corresponding chords in each. Use our pals or your own song styles to change the key using the same memorized patterns. Study and get to know the fundamental seven patterns and their unique scale characteristics by name and through playing them. 
Find your favorites playing these more often than others, but never forget the major scale. And remember, as Miss Andrews sang in The Sound of Music, that will bring us back to Do. In other words, the major scale as a fundamental tool for a lifetime of music. Thank you for watching. Your support and comments mean a whole bunch to me and our team. Please let us know your comments and questions, and if this video was helpful. I'll be holding live stream events to take your questions in the weeks ahead. So come on back, and if you'd like to support us, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our free membership at treblelife.com. Uh -huh. <laughs>